Aroostook, the oldest state park in Maine. For 75 years, this recreational paradise has provided respite from everyday life. Its twin peaks, Quaggy Joe, may be reached by short hikes with breathtaking views. Whether visitors are camping overnight or enjoying a day trip, this park has much to offer, starting with a fascinating history. In 1938, the newly created State Park Commission, which had been formed in 1935, recommended that the state accept a gift of 100 acres of land nearby Presque Isle. This became a Roostic State Park, the first state park in the system. Enthusiasm for this idea came from the Presque Isle Merchants Association, who raised the $2,000 needed to purchase the land. County folk gave generously. An additional grant for $16,000 helped develop the Quaggy Joe project, with WPA workers supplied to build trails, construct toboggan slides, and complete warming huts. The park was a huge success, drawing large crowds in all seasons of the year, but winter activities were, and still are, very popular. A snack bar located in the lodge was also a favorite haunt. Today, the park remains a well-loved location, offering exciting and relaxing activities year-round. To find out more about the early history of the park, we spoke to Phil McLaughlin, who worked as a ranger in Aroostook State Park from 1958 to 1972, and still enjoys skiing and snowshoeing in the park today. His family's land was taken by eminent domain. What does he think of the park today? Yes, very pleased. I think Scott and Alan Cleves have done a good job, and uh, I'd like to see the use continue, and, uh, and I'd like to see the young people and the parents more often come out and do some camping. We asked Phil if he regrets his family's land was taken. No, not really. I, uh, I made a career out of working here, and uh, my father we owned a camp on the lake, and I think in the biggest part, it was uh, probably good for the community to have a state park. We asked him if any tragedies have ever occurred in the park. I think maybe uh, the overuse of the park. Uh, we had to turn a lot of people away, which I didn't really care for. <clears throat> and we had one spring, one school group uh, was a young man that drowned before the lifeguards were on and uh, other than that I think there was no more catastrophes. Things seemed to work pretty good. It was a, a beautiful career. I liked it and uh, I grew up with the Rangers kids that was here and I come quite often. I like to help Scott <clears throat> do a little maintenance and if he has uh, outdoor activities. I volunteer. I, last year I cooked 16 pounds of hot dogs for a youth group that was here uh, from park recreations from different towns. And, and Halloween I volunteer to help park cars or whatever he needs. And there's quite a few of the neighborhood that come down to help. And they like to see the park uh, get used to the, the people. Summer in the park allows visitors to enjoy the beauty of Echo Lake, as well as sightings of wildlife. To really get to know Aroostook State Park intimately, the student film crew making this documentary decided to go on a camping trip before spending the rest of the year filming scenes during other seasons. Because Aroostook is an older state park, the campsites are very spacious. This party has selected a group camping site that will allow them to erect a total of five tents. Thirty wooded sites, each with a table and fire pit, are available for either tent or trailer camping. There are always a few campsites still available. This park, located five miles south of Presque Isle, is an ideal starting point for discovering the northern Maine woods, the Allagash Waterway, as well as the Canadian provinces of New Brunswick and Quebec. Nearly 20,000 visitors 
come to Aroostook State Park each year. The park has both primitive and modern facilities, from outhouses to modern bathrooms, including hot showers. Aroostook State Park is a safe place to camp. This camper injured her foot at home before arriving at the park. A fellow camper provided the band-aid. Main state law now requires the firewood must be brought in from the local area to help prevent harmful invasive insects. Yeah, I know the wind. The campers had to get creative when they realized the firing was far too large for the grill they brought from home. Helpful park staff provided metal bars to help the campers suspend their grill over the flames. There is nothing more satisfying than successfully cooking a complete meal out of doors, especially when the effort expended and the fresh air have worked their magic to pique the appetite. This is a hot dog. <laughs> By the time the campers had cleaned up from their meal, it was time for lights out. Next day would begin early. While some of the crew did kitchen patrol duty to get the breakfast ready, Another group hiked up the mountain to capture the early morning views. <clears throat> the crew this morning cooked most of their breakfast the old-fashioned way on a wood stove. On a camping trip in the heart of potato farming country, the first item prepared has to be home fries. The hikers headed for the summit of North Peak will also appreciate a hefty helping of bacon and scrambled eggs. Blueberry muffins will punctuate the meal. Although it may appear as a nest, this is probably a gathering of dead tree material. Morning breaks as the hikers reach the mountain ridge. Views include the newly built windmill on the campus of the University of Maine in Presque Isle. Hikers find the trail leading to North Peak less rigorous than the more steep trail found on South Peak. When the hikers arrive back at the base, breakfast is ready, and so are their hearty appetites. The kitchen shelter provides a community setting that is used for many purposes throughout the year. Well, not literally. I'm not crispy. Well, Aroostook State Park's Handicap Accessible Lakeside Area provides picnic tables, charcoal grills, a swimming area, and changing facilities. One member of the student film crew decided to try out the refreshing water of Echo Lake. Echo Lake makes up the 800 acres of publicly owned land in Aroostook State Park. Some of the film crew decide to learn kayaking, while others opt for canoeing. The boating area at Echo Lake offers ample space for parking, launching, and docking. Canoes and paddle boats can be rented at the control station. Life jackets and paddles are included. While some of the film crew are kayaking, others ask a group of student visitors from Amherst, Massachusetts, how they happen to visit Aroostook State Park. 
Uh, we were planning to come down to Maine for just a getaway and we looked online and this looked like a really nice place. It's beautiful, it's nice outside, the lake is beautiful and we've just been here and some of our friends went up hiking but we preferred canoeing. So we plan to uh, stay around Aristook today, this afternoon till this afternoon probably and then we'll drive down to Acadia and explore that area today and we'll camp tonight and then probably we'll leave tomorrow. It's been beautiful. We were lucky to have really nice weather and we hope to enjoy the rest of our stay here as well. Would you like to return some other time? Sure, we uh, asked about uh, snowmobiling information and we'd probably come back this winter. In summer, Aroostook State Park also provides exciting opportunities to go fishing with a lake that is stocked with brook trout. Autumn in the park is the perfect time to enjoy walks and hikes in the cool, crisp air. The park's natural areas are typical of northern Maine. Its forest is a mixture of spruce, fir, beech, and maple. Cedar stands can be found in low, swampy areas. The park is a photographer's dream at all times of the year, but especially with the brilliant autumn foliage, which is breathtaking when filmed from the air. The park provides the perfect location for educational activities, including the unit being conducted today by an outdoor pursuits class from the University of Maine at Presque Isle. This class is demonstrating how to care for an injured person who needs to be protected from the elements during an overnight stay in the wilderness. Uh, since I've been in this outdoor pursuits class for uh, my major, uh, I've probably came out here three or four times now for uh, two to three hours at a time. We've hiked both peaks um, on the mountain and done all sorts of learning service projects and stuff out here. Well, we teach, I teach uh, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, winter camping. Uh, today we're doing some wild basic wilderness first aid and uh, survival skills and uh, just a lot of hiking and team, like team building activities. One great advantage for educators with Aroostook State Park is that during the school year, entrance to the park as well as camping is free for students and their teachers who are engaged in educational activities. Um, it helps us by getting like a hands-on experience. There's only so much you can do being an outdoor recreation major in the classroom. Getting out, outside, we really get to like uh, get our hands wet. And uh, um, as you can see, we get to uh, really do things um, like firsthand instead of like by a book or uh, somebody else's experience. Um, generally, you have something like your sleeping pad, which you'll have if you're backpacking or canoeing. I'll definitely come back to Roostick State Park. It's a beautiful place to come to. And um, just outdoor pursuits in general is a good experience to have. Like, you learn a lot. I'm a psychology major, and I've learned a lot about myself, even just having this course. I teach a lot of outdoor recreation classes, so it seemed like a natural fit. And I had done some personal skiing and hiking here, so, and actually, when I came up for my interview, I camped here, so, um, so I just, it's just a perfect fit for what we do at the university. Another exciting use for the park, taking place in the fall, is a special Halloween event. It was the Presque uh, Chamber of Commerce's idea to uh, bring the park, or bring the haunted walk to the park, and they felt that the 
uh, wooded area and the campground area was an ideal location to, to, help, to hold the event. We estimate that there was about 1,500 people that came through the gates in the two nights. And in that 1,500, there was approximately 200 volunteers. Oh, well, this is our second uh, attempt of having this event at the park. And last year, we had just under 1,000 people. So we've increased the attendance almost by 500 people. Uh, the amount of uh, uh, volunteers that took part in the event uh, increased also. So uh, the word of mouth getting out into the, into the community is that it is a, a good community event. And people are, are uh, really wanting to come in to uh, take advantage of uh, what we're offering. Uh, everything was great. I thought the the decorations were great. The acting was excellent. Actually, uh, uh, very well organized, orchestrated, and it uh, it went pretty smoothly. It was it was scary. I liked it. <laughs> that was good. I noticed uh, some people screaming, both of these ones. But it was a good it was a good experience all all. In the beginning, uh, it was scary, and people in the crates and stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's those parts where you, I don't care who you are, you get shocked anyways throughout this whole this whole walkthrough. Yes, I got scared a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when the girl screamed and, and said, don't get me. One of the favorite activities at this event was a tour of a haunted school bus. Children especially got spooked during the scary oh, time. Smoky. <laughs> 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 Holy jeez, there's more than I remember last time. Uh, the bus scared me the most, but the West didn't really scare me. I thought it was lots of fun and it was really cool. I thought it was pretty scary. <laughs> this is like the where our Blair. You killed him, go check him out. Make sure he's dead. Make sure he's dead. A Halloween event like this would not be complete without hot cider, popcorn, and other traditional treats. It takes a lot of imagination and work to host an event like this, but park staff, along with local Prescott Chamber of Commerce and other volunteers, pull off successful events like this at the park for the enjoyment of all. I enjoyed all of them. I enjoy hauntings, I enjoy poltergeists and everything that goes bump in the night. I enjoy it uh, utterly and I found all the skits to be very, very uh, well put together. Uh, any type of event like this that we hold at the park uh, is, is good for the community and good for, for us here at the facility. And uh, anytime we get this many people to the, to the park, it's a, it's a wonderful evening. Winter in Aroostook State Park is the perfect opportunity for exciting events. It also requires a different kind of maintenance. Managing the park in the, in the winter time is very uh, interesting and uh, rewarding because uh, the elements, uh, Mother Nature changes the landscape. It gives us a great palette to work with. We're able to uh, get out and groom cross-country ski trails, uh, pack snowshoe trails, snow blow plow, uh, rake and shovel snow off roofs and, and, and pathways and driveways. Um, the park becomes a, a beautiful white wonderland where people can come in and recreate. A uh, majority of our duties in the wintertime is basically to provide a safe recreating uh, facility for cross-country uh, skiing enthusiasts and snowshoers. Uh, we do offer winter camping and uh, we do have a sliding hill which uh, uh, folks can take a, a, a slide down a short little fun run uh, to, to the lakeside where uh, if they have their skates they can go out and ice skate on the, on the lake. It's traditional each winter for local Boy Scout troops to come to Aroostook State Park for a winter-rama. After a weekend of hard work, they have turned the campsite area into a site that looks if it were an Alaskan village.
they actually do spend the night in these igloos that are made into various shapes and sizes. Just naturally we do this every year and this year it was even more interesting because they're actually getting back to the roots of scouting. It's now you, know, you come up here you're actually getting the outdoor camping experience. Not You're actually going to have to live by, you know, dress properly and be prepared for what you're going to do up here. Boys enjoy it. I enjoyed it when I was a Boy Scout, man. It's like, I feel that you and these guys need to do it as well. Eh? It's something to always remember. Although these troops are all competing to win a trophy for best winter campsite, they lend each other a hand in hauling supplies and materials to one another's sites. Youngsters learn survival skills in this environment that could prove useful later in life if they ever needed to spend a night in the woods in the winter. I think it's really fun because we get to experience lots of different obstacles and camp out and have fun by being with your friends and doing the different activities. Um, it's really fun because as you're digging, it's, you get to see how um, it works and how warm it can keep you. They should come because it's really fun and experiencing all the different activities that we, they do and you get to camp and um, just be with your friends. In some years, the Boy Scouts, who take part in the Winterama during February school vacation, experience extremely cold weather. But this year's milder weather doesn't present that same challenge. Basically, um, the eagles the eagles aren't cold, even though they're made of snow. Snow is actually a really good insulator, and you have tons of sleeping bags. Um, you, you're or urged to like bring two sleeping bags, so it's pretty warm. And people are like put shoulder to shoulder for it's like body warmth, you know. Um, and you can and they stay up and say like jokes and you know horror stories. Something around the campfire, but inside the igloo. Um, but um, pretty much, um, yeah, it's pretty fun. It's funner than you'd think. The igloo's pretty warm. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it gets too hot in that igloo. It's like, ugh, it's too hot. <laughs> All right, we got um, with our igloo, we basically go through the entrance. It's pretty thick. With, the snow's pretty thick. Um, and the snow's also, and as I said before, the snow's a pretty good insulator. So is the hay. We also put like tarp on the ground, hay on the ground, to insulate even further. Winter Fun Day has become one of the most popular events throughout the year in Aroostook State Park. Hundreds of people turn out for a variety of exciting activities including ice skating, snowshoeing, sliding, ice sculpting, cross-country skiing, and dog sled rides. We asked Lindy Howe of Haywood Kettles why she brought her team out today to give visitors rides. To share the love of the Huskies with other people and families. Did you see the line of people waiting? <laughs> the whole reason I got into dog sledding to begin with was because I wanted something fun to do in the winter. So to have it be part of a take it outside day is perfect for the love that I have for it. And when I first started this business, people showed such interest in it that um, it's something that they have always wanted to do. I hear that a lot. I've always wanted to do this. So to be able to see that smiling face when they get out of the basket after a ride is so rewarding. This is a great place to run our dogs and share it with the families that are coming here. I hope we can come back year after year. <laughs> I liked it. The gentleman that took took us, he explained us about the dogs, and so it was very nice. Uh, well, we went on the skidoo rides, and then we went over to the hill and went sliding. So we did a little bit of all of it. So.
Dixie Shaw, who lives right near the park, skis here nearly every day. She is here today to give skiing lessons. Activities held here sometimes include donations to Catholic Charities of Maine. I love Aroostook State Park. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in Aroostook County. Matter of fact, the state of Maine. I ski here in, on the cross country ski trails in the wintertime. They're the best I've seen. And I've skied several places throughout the state of Maine. I love Aroostook State Park. I swear you can hear the snowflakes land. You need to come out and see what the park has to offer. There's a wide variety of things to do. If you're not into skiing, there's snowshoeing, there's walking through the woods. It's so pretty out here, it's like walking inside of a Christmas card in the wintertime. Spring comes late to Arusta County, but when it does, it comes suddenly and dramatically. No sooner has the snow melted than green shoots emerge. If you blink, you may miss springtime in the park, but one event captures spring in all her glory during the annual emergence of the dragonfly. After spending a long winter's nap, the dragonflies hatch out over a three-day period and become effective natural bite killers. They typically consume up to three times their body weight a day in pesky insects. At this time, park staff stop mowing along the lakeside and avoid using chemicals, allowing the young dragonflies to emerge as nature intended. The park is a great place to visit this time of year when spring fever hits, and graduating seniors are counting the days until school is out. For decades, Aroostook State Park has provided an oasis of calm for visitors. It also offers a fun and exciting place for recreation and community events. Thanks to the vision of a few local leaders and the generosity of thousands of county folk, Aroostook became Maine's first state park. This gem of northern Maine will continue to give visitors and residents alike a restful retreat from the pressures of modern day life. Thank you.